I'm Liz Faubless and this is Currents. The smiling Pope, a milestone, and a member of his family will speak with her tonight. Welcome back. A long-standing controversy is being put to rest today. The priest in charge of the beatification cause of Pope John Paul I says new evidence proves the Pope was not murdered. The Holy Father served for only 33 days before he died. Ever since then, there has been no shortage of conspiracy theories regarding his death. New facts regarding his health now confirm that he was not killed. And John Paul I was known as the Smiling Pope. Tomorrow is the 100th anniversary of his birth. This past weekend, experts on JP1, along with the late pontiff's niece, came to Queens to discuss his legacy, and we were there. We're in the Immaculate Conception Center in Douglaston. We're going to start the second and last day of the Pope John Paul I Centenary Conference. And it's uh, called the true Pope John Paul I because we're trying to strip away these myths and misunderstandings about his life and his death. Ever since I was little, every time I would visit my cousins in Vittorio Veneto, they'd have pictures of John Paul I. And I wondered why do they have this Pope on the wall? And after time, I learned more about him. And when I entered the seminary, I started to try to read his writings and hope I would become a priest, half the priest that he is. The sad and tragic thing in America is that people remember the brevity of his pontificate and the, and the sudden death, as well as all of the rumors and conspiracy theories that uh, deal with the, the passing of the Pope. Pope John Paul I is becoming a folk hero for all the wrong reasons to certain people. And they're able to do this because there's a vacuum. Um, they're making up a Pope for themselves who didn't exist, and they don't know the real person because nobody has told them. That's not what we should remember. We should remember here an extraordinary man who the world understood to be very humble and meek. And yet what I think very few people understand is that throughout his career he demonstrated time and again that he was a very decisive man, that he was willing to take unpopular uh, positions on things, and uh, that he was very, very firm in his convictions and his beliefs, and he never compromised those. Sapeva godere anche di tutte le belle cose della vita. Sapeva godere di un bel paesaggio, della natura, di un bel pezzo di musica, un buon film. C'era una persona che sapeva veramente apprezzare ciò che era bello e soprattutto cercare il positivo dappertutto anche nelle situazioni più difficili. Some of the things that in the popular imagination, in England at least, uh, John Paul II takes credit for, I think, uh, actually stem from John Paul I. Uh, the, sim the simplification of the papal style, um, doing away with the sedia gestatoria, this kind of thing. Um, it doesn't sound very much now, but at the time it was quite revolutionary. Someone once said that uh, Pope Luciani smiled more in five minutes than Paul VI had in 15 years. His sorriso era proprio un'espressione dell'amore verso gli altri un modo per accogliere gli altri con affetto. Per me è stato mio secondo padre e quindi è come se fosse morto non uno zio ma un padre. Lori Piper, who organized the conference, has written about John Paul I and translated many of his writings and testimonies about his life. Paul Spackman, who we also heard in that report, is author of the book God's Candidate, The Life and Times of John Paul I. And Mo Gernon is working on a biography of John Paul I as well.